Hey guys, hope you're doing well. It sure has been a while since we've gotten together, but I did want to go ahead and finish up our study on um, how to live a disciplined Christian life. And uh, we've been using as our text Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Um, we have already uh, went over several things that uh, are necessary if we want to be live a disciplined, godly life. Uh, and in that verse, Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1, it says we need to lay aside every weight and sin which so easily encumbers and snares slow us down so that we may run the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, it's not possible to run that race if we don't lay aside these things, these encumbrances. And we've talked about the discipline of purity. Uh, we've talked about uh, the discipline of relationships. If you want to be a person, you got to hang around a better person. Uh, you got to seek out godly relationships. Uh, we've talked about a discipline of the mind. My grandmother used to say that the mind is the devil's playhouse. We have to be extremely careful what we allow into our minds. We're told that we are to have the mind of Christ in 1 Corinthians 2 and 6, 16. We're also told in 2 Corinthians 10, 5 that we are to cast down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. There are things that enter into my mind and your mind that exalt itself themselves against the knowledge of Christ. And if you don't capture those things, they will enslave you if you're not careful. So we need to discipline our mind. We also need a discipline of devotion. Meditation upon the Word of God is essential. It's not going to happen by us osmosis, okay? Uh, you have to purposely set aside time to be in the Word of God. Uh, the more we expose our lives to the righteous life of Christ, the more His image will be burned into our character. The, it, it's hard to do His will if we do not know His will. And the purpose of devotion, getting into the Word of God, is that God's Word will bend our wills to His will. And then we also talked about the discipline of integrity, what you would do if you could do and knew you could not get caught. Integrity. Uh, we need to have an integrity level that is above that of the world. The world is not the standard of integrity. Okay, God's Word is. Everything that we say, everything that we do should be an intentionally true. Our level of integrity, again, is not set by the world, it is set by the Word of God. And then also the discipline of the tongue. We need to be careful. If a man does not know how to bridle his tongue, um, the writer of James says, his religion is futile. Uh, we need to learn how to control our tongues offered to God on the altar the tongue is an awesome power for good but if it is not it is an awesome power for evil and we need to be careful we went over the acronym think t-h-i-n-c-k is it true is it helpful is it inspiring is it necessary is it kind and then we talked about the discipline of work when we see God he's working when God places man in the garden he's working our future with God is working we need to have the discipline of work I am convinced that the way we true way we work truly reveals how much we allow the image of God to develop in us and it doesn't matter if your work is sacred in the church or it's secular outside of the church do all things as unto God Okay, and then we talked about the discipline of purpose or the discipline of perseverance, uh, continuing. We talked about divesting and running and focusing and considering when it comes to perseverance. And you can go back and listen to that study. Uh, now, today I'm going to close out with the discipline of church and the discipline of giving. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian, you don't have to go home to be married. But in both cases, if you do not, you will have a very poor relationship. Um, you will never attain the spiritual level 
uh, that God asks of you, nor will your family reach its spiritual maturity without a commitment to the church. Um, three institutions that God created, the institution of marriage, the institution of human government, and the institution of the church. Um, and God made these things because they are extremely important, and God sent His only Son to die for the church. Uh, the church was formed in Acts at the uh, filling at Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover. The church was born. Christ gave Him Himself for the church. That's you and me. We are the bride of Christ. The Bible says that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but so much so more as we see the day approaching. You need to be in church. You need to find a good church and plug in. You need to find a good church and be a part of that church. Support that pastor. Be a part of the congregation. Be there so often that when you're not there, they realize it. They know that you're not there. Uh, that's called accountability. And listen, guys, we live in a day where people don't want accountability. Um, we live near neighbors, and we don't even know who they are. Uh, we live in complexes. You know, we live in the matrix in some places, and we don't even know the people across the hall. I mean, we were designed to live in community. The church is a community. You need to find a church and be accountable to that church. You need to plug in and be a part of that church. You need to support that church financially with your time, your talents, and your treasures. You need to be a part of a local church. And it, it grieves me that so many churches today, you know, they open their doors for an hour and a half. If that, nothing on Sunday nights, nothing on Wednesday nights. Let me just... From my observation for years in ministry, the churches that are the strongest are the ones that have multiple services throughout the week. Period. Now that may, you may not be a belong, belong to one of the churches, but look around. The churches that are growing, that are doing, that are flourishing, where the people are thriving, have multiple services throughout the week. Uh, you need to feed your spiritual man just like you feed your, your physical man. If you don't feed your physical man, your body will dry up, shrivel up, and die. Rigor mortis will set in and you'll die. The same thing will happen to your spiritual man. You need to feed your spirit. Okay? You need to feed your spirit by setting under the teaching of the Word of God, by fellowshipping with other believers, by breaking bread with other believers, by being a part of the lives of other believers, not only in the church, but also outside of the church. It's how we grow. We were designed to live in community. You need to find a local church, and you need to support that church. You need to be a part of that church. You need to let that pastor know you are there to serve. You need to let that pastor know that he, when he looks out there on Sunday morning, you're going to be sitting there. And Sunday night and Wednesday night or whatever other kind of opportunities they have for service. I was talking to somebody the other day. I go to a very large church, yet the rule is the same. 10% of the people do 90% of the work. That's not the way it's designed to be. Get off your butt, plug into a church, and be a part of community. That's what God wants of you. Uh, and finally, discipline of giving. You need to support that church. That, that pastor is drawing a salary. That pastor is supporting a family. He should live as good as you do. He shouldn't live below you. I mean, he's got a wife, he's got children, he's got bills to pay. You need to support that. The electricity, those warm padded pews that you're sitting on, they're not free. I mean, all of those things cost money, <laughs> you know? Uh, bring ye the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, saith the Lord, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing, you'll not be able to receive it. You want to escape the power of materialism? Give. Giving from a heart overflowing with God's grace, like the believers in Macedonia. In 2 Corinthians 8, 5, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave themselves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Notice they gave themselves to the Lord. If you'll give yourself to the Lord, trust me, giving some of your money to him won't be a problem. Listen, in all my years of pastoring and teaching, the only people that get mad at me when I speak about a sin is usually the ones who are involved in that sin. If I talk about adultery, the adulterers are the ones that are going to get offended. I talk about the fornication, the fornicators are going to be the ones that's, that get offended. Inevitably, when I talk about tithing, when I talk about bringing your gifts to the storehouse, guess who gets mad? 
not the tithers, not the ones that give regularly, the ones who don't, the ones who want to justify why they're living in disobedience. All giving to the Lord must start with giving ourselves first. Giving disarms the power of money, and I believe that our giving should be regular. It should also be spontaneous and responsive. You know, uh, Paul told the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, So let each one of you give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. You see, all these disciplines we need if we want to live a godly, prosperous Christian life. We need to, to discipline ourselves. The word, the word disciple, the root word, is a disciplined one. We need, to be dis <laughs> we need to be disciplined to be a disciple. You want to be a disciple? You want to follow Christ? Do these things. They're not easy. If they were easy, everyone would be doing it. You know, uh, it's not easy to do all these things, but it's not an excuse not to try to do all these things. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul wasn't perfect. Paul, was, Paul made mistakes. I'm not perfect. I made mistakes. Same with you. But you know what? I'm not looking at you and you're not looking at me. We're looking at him. We follow Paul as he is following Christ. He is the author, the finisher of our faith. We need to keep our eyes on him. Him. Uh, and remember, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Listen, God bless you guys, and it's been a pleasure taking you on this journey, talking about how to live a godly, disciplined Christian life, and we'll see what the Lord will have us teach next. But listen, remember always, He loves you, wants the best for you. He's working all things out for your good.